The Nigerian career industry is one of the most troubled sectors of the Nigerian economy at this time. And prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, that sector had been grappling with a lot of challenges, including multiple taxation. The Nigerian Postal Service recently announced a cocktail of guidelines which included licensing fees and other regulations that seem geared towards restricting competition in the logistics value chain. But hours after that release, the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy suspended the policy after the decision was greeted by backlash from operators and the general public. One of the private sector entities that has raised concerns over the regulation is the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry that identified other fundamental regulatory issues beyond that of the license and fees. But joining me now to speak to some of these concerns is the Vice President of the Association of Nigeria Career Operators, Jumoke Imaswe. Good morning and thank you for coming on the program. Good morning, Chinese. In MBC, actually. Okay. Well, all right. So let's begin the conversation now. Of course, since uh, the Minister of Communications and uh, Digital Economy suspended NIPO's recent policy, what has the logistics and the career services atmosphere looked like? Have operators now uh, regained their confidence? Um, thank you for having me here. Um, we have actually still been going through and discussing a lot of these policies. And um, it's not just us alone. We have another career association, the International Air Korea Aviation as well, NIACA. And we both had to come together to draw up a communique, mm -hmm. which we have sent to the minister and what's to take a look at it again. And um, one of it is the 2% commission mm -hmm. that NIPOS is demanding of all the career companies. I mean, who does that? 2%. You don't even know if that career company has even broken even mm -hmm. in that particular year. And they're asking for 2% of the total earnings of that career company. And don't forget that the economy isn't doing very well. And it is also affecting our sector as it is. And we also have so many taxations that we pay, levies, you know, either by the local government, by the state, state government, and now the federal government. So we're actually coming up, or we've come up with some, you know, suggestions to the ministry on the way forward for the sector. But apart from the 2%, what other area of um, concerns? Well, in, in, in one of the policies that was just signed by Nightpost is actually asking that Korea companies cannot take on or deliver items of, um, you know, the, the annual reports, stuff yeah. like annual reports, share certificates, mm -hmm. dividend warrants, and mm -hmm. all of that. Things to do with the capital market. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at it like this is an economy that should be free. The customers have a right to choose who they want to ask mm -hmm. to do their business for them. Now, uh, of course, is it a collective opinion that there should be no increase in licensing fees across the various class of operations? Or is it just that the revised fees were too ambitious as it were? Well, um, over the years, ANCO has been in existence for the past 18 years. And we've worked, will I say, peacefully in sync with NIPOST because they have a department that regulates us, the Korea Regulatory Department, the CRD. And we've worked, you know, in harmony with them over these years. We actually pay a renewal fee of 352,500 naira every year to renew our license. And what I find so or what association and IACA has found, found so troubling is the fact that there was a time that NIPOS actually had about 290 licensed career companies in this country. As at April this year, they are down to 150. And why is that? And they haven't come up to ask the stakeholders, us, mm -hmm. to say to us what could be the challenges that you're having in the sector. What do you think could be 
or what are the issues that is making companies to drop out of this particular sector and find some other means to survive. Rather than call us, let us you know, have a round table discussion. Let us air what our challenges are that we are facing in the sector so they can formulate policies that will enable this sector to strive. They didn't do any of, any of that. All we just saw was an increase in the renewal of our license, licenses every year. You can imagine for Nigerian courier operators, mm. um, uh, to obtain the license is 10 million, and then you do a 40% every year, which comes to 4 million naira as renewal fee every year. Some of our colleagues haven't even made that kind of money this year. I mean, talk less of giving that to the government. And that is outside the fact that there are so many other levies, you know, slammed on dispatch riders by the local government, by the state government, and, you know, other taxes. You know, you pay your staff, LIRS, FIRS, and so many other levies and taxations. So are levies and taxations the only reason why you've had, you know, people, your colleagues actually drop out of this business? No. We've actually had a lot of challenges in terms of the fact that, um, you know, the economy is a reflection of how well, it, uh, how well organizations will strive. And as companies go down, there are really no more packages from those companies that have closed down. And then we also cannot take out the fact that technology has taken out a lot of, you know, people who ordinarily would want to send packages, you know, maybe a check from one organization to another. These days what they just do is scan the copy and the, per the, other, the, the, the destination receives and is treated. So all of that has actually, you know, scaled down the volume that we normally will pick. And now that we have seen that, a lot of us have tried to go into logistics, mm -hmm. haulage, and the rest. But we have so many, you know, unlicensed operators in that particular mm -hmm. sector. If you go to Edo, for example, you just find, you know, lorries that are there ready to load and move from Lagos to any destination. Right. They don't have anything at stake. They don't pay renewal license fee. They don't pay taxation. They don't pay all of these levies that we do. But is anything so being done to actually curb this? That's why I said the two associations have actually come up together. Mm -hmm. In fact, especially after we saw these new guidelines by NIPOS to, you know, look at all of these issues and offer our own and all air our own views concerning it. Now, let's still talk about the tech now. Tell us, what has the, the impact what? of uh, the tech-oriented tech industry? Okay. I mean, talking about yeah. it now, what has the impact of NIPOS regulations actually had on some of the startups, the tech startup in the career industry? Uh, for example, the likes of Max or NG, we have Gokada, and even uh, Wei Halin, which recently suspended operations in Lagos. Um... Well, like we have always said, the market is big enough for everyone to strive in. And um, what we are actually just trying to do now is to get both associations getting these new um, operators so we can all regulate this sector a whole lot more professionally. And talking about regulation obligations and uh, the social services delivery voluntary requests from the service, it looks like operators are actually not so bothered about that, but instead want more clarity as to the definition of those clauses. Um, well, if you look at, I mean, what the government is saying, if they had carried us along as stakeholders and we feel like, oh, all the policies that is being set out is actually to see the growth of this industry. Of course, we will come out 
There's nothing wrong in taking up social responsibilities. But when you feel that the government, the policies that they've set out to regulate us is actually anti-growth, there's no way you will want to feel like you have any obligation towards fulfilling such. But one of the arguments that Nipus will put up is the fact that the new regulations were meant to weed out bad eggs and uh, improve consumer confidence in this sector. How? Can I throw that back at you? You tell us. How? Because they have actually not taken us in. We are the ones, I mean, there's a parable that says, is he who wears the shoes that knows where it pinches. Mm -hmm. They haven't called us to ask, what are the issues? What are the challenges? So how would they just sit in the comfort of their office and draw up this for us? There are so many ways that you can wield out you know, the unprofessional people, which is exactly what the associations are actually trying to do. Mm. You need us to wield away the unprofessional operators in the sector. And what are some There's of the no ways, way can, what are some of the that. ways that this could be done? Well, we had actually been talking with them prior to these guidelines that we need them to register and not just register, a whole lot of, you know, investigation needs to be put into it. Where are the offices? How um, experienced are they? What kind of security can they prefer, you know, before we can allow them or entrust customers to take a package from origin to destination? But how do we enforce all of this? <sighs> we, like I just said, we have actually been, you know, we've worked out all of these modalities, how we want them to be registered. They must have an office that can be visited. Mm. They must have a certain number of staff. They must have a certain number of, you know, machinery and all of that put in place to, for us to feel that, yes, they can actually do the work professionally and and, and, and well. Now, if your members were to sit with NIPOS now as an association, would you call for a total overhaul of the Postal Service Act that uh, operations should be left uh, status quo? Um, well, you, you know, the, the thing is um, NIPOS is our regulator and they're also a player. Mm -hmm. So it becomes pretty difficult when you have somebody who has dual role, the player and the regulator. So what we actually and we have been advocating for is the Postal Bill Commission. About um, two, three years ago, we actually had um, a hearing at the Senate and um, a couple of things we adjusted in the Postal Bill. So we believe that if that Postal Bill is passed into law, it will give us an independent regulator, which will mm -hmm. also in turn, um, in, in, in turn regulate the NIPOST themselves. So that gives us a fair, equal playing ground. So if we can actually push for the Postal Bill Commission and, you know, is actualized, I'm sure a couple of these things will Find a level. But we would also like to know how your members are actually coping with other regulatory headwinds at the state's levels. For instance, the vehicle inspection permits, coping with extortions from some law enforcement agents and the rest. Yeah, I think about, um, was it two weeks ago or so, um, the dispatch riders of various companies actually threatened to go on strike. And why is that? It, just what you just said about levies. You know, they just come up with something midway through the year. And um, our association has actually done a, re a letter to Lagos State where we are asking that we need specific guidelines of what is required for the courier company and their dispatch riders to run on the road. We'd like to thank you. And we are you. waiting for that for the guidelines. So once that is done, we will know for sure that yes, 
when anybody accosts you on the road, you can say to them, mm -hmm. these are the guidelines. Please go through my documents. Tell me if there's any that is missing. All right, thank you. Vice President of the Association of Nigeria Career Operators, Jamoke Imaswe. Thank, thank you for coming you, on Business Morning. Thank you. Do have a wonderful day. Our commodities market update is up next when we return in just a moment. Please stay with us.